All right. So what I have talked about in the till now in the in the previous lecture, and everybody can hear me in the in the classroom, right? Okay. Is that uh, error correction is uh, all about redundancy, right? So, well, first of all, okay, let me just go over some of these things you might have forgotten. There are two kinds of errors, face, fit, face flip and bit flip. This is clear. Are there any doubts about this? Right, so, so bit, bit flip, you can understand as uh, going from the zero state to the one state. Phase flip you can understand as going from the plus state to the minus state as a bit flip in the in the uh, bell ba bell basis right so this is called the bell basis the plus minus so the simplest approach to error correction involves uh, using redundancy right so you encode a single qubit a single logical qubit using three uh, physical qubits so that way if one of those qubits undergoes an error, uh, you will still have two which are unaffected. And maybe with some, uh, maybe there is some way then in which you can, you can recover, right? So what is, what is the process? Now let me uh, go to, so this is, Let's see. Right. So then we also talked about how to encode uh, how to encode this logical qubit in in these physical qubits. Right. This is your circuit. And as I explained, um, if you take this circuit, right, and you apply the first C naught gate, so you write psi as alpha zero plus beta one, you apply the first C naught gate. What happens? You start with this state. You apply the first C naught gate. Now, when you apply the C naught gate, uh, this, is the, this is the control and this is the target, right? So this first bit is the control, the second bit is the target. So in this state, nothing happens because the control is zero. Right. In this state, the target is flipped because the control is one. Right. So you get beta one one zero. Then you apply the C naught gate again, using uh, this as your control, and this is your target. And once again, so nothing happens to the first state, uh, but the second state goes to one one one. Right. So you end up in this, in this state. Right. And this is called a uh, this is called a cat state. There's a word for it. States of this form are called cat state. So typically, if you have an n qubit, um, state which looks like this, something like one by root two, all zeros and all ones. So first of all, this is a highly entangled state, right? There is no, you cannot factorize it, right? So it's highly entangled. And the reason we refer to this as a cat state, right? Because we are actually referring to Schrodinger's cat, that cat, okay? Because in the limit of large n, right, your, system becomes more and more macroscopic, right? So if you imagine that, that you have a system which is, consists of a very large number of qubits, like enough to make a cat, and you put that system in this kind of a state, this would, this would correspond to, let's say, this could be something like dead, and this could be alive, right? So this, this would be the uh, statement of Schrodinger's cat. Right? Okay, so now let's talk about um, error correction. So how can we correct errors 
in our in our system okay so we have to perform a measurement without performing a measurement we can't tell if there is been an error or not but the problem is that typically measurements will cause your quantum state to collapse you will lose quantum you will lose the quantum correlation right and you don't want that to happen right so you want to perform measurements but you want to perform them in a way uh that your quantum state or at least the information the quantum information that you want is left undisturbed and you can do that uh using these operators so right so these are projection operators okay i hope that uh, you all remember what a projection operator is right it a projection operator is something of the form bra phi ket phi right and so this is a projection operator 0 0 and this is another projection operator right what will be the effect of this projection operator so let me say that i have uh is it too small i think maybe it's a little bit small i'll try to write a little bigger so that you can see more clearly what will be the effect of this projection operator on our logical on our encoded state right so this is our encoded state and we act on this state with p not right so we have this guy and acting on on this fellow right now the first set of 0 0 that operator will annihilate the second the second component because 0 0 0 is orthogonal to 1 1 1 1 and similarly 1 1 1 will annihilate 0 0 0 so you will be left with with psi right so this means there is no error right similarly we can construct other projection operators okay and here we are given a set of three projection operators right and we want to look at in this case we are first looking at uh i'm sorry about you guys but the people on on zoom can see this just fine uh so then we have now we have a set of four other projectors okay which have uh the similar form 100 can you guys see it on your phone okay good right so this what is this projector doing right Uh, this is projecting onto the case when there is a single bit flip right there is a single bit flip on the first qubit so if there is a single bit flip on the first qubit what will what will happen to psi psi will go to 100 0 11 right and so that's what this second this projector is doing this state is 1 0 and this state is 0 1 so once again if you act on and so let me call this i don't know what to call it let me call it psi prime if you act if your state happens to be psi prime psi tilde prime and you act on it p1 you will get psi psi tilde prime okay so there's no one over there right and what happens if you take your projector p not and you act on the state um psi tilde prime what will you get zero right so similarly we can define projectors 
for a single bit flip on qubit 2. Then we can define a projector for a single bit flip on qubit 3. Okay. Now, so if you measure, if you measure uh, your, your state, right, you will get zero if the condition, if the ith condition is false, right? ith condition means i goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, right? And 1 if it is true. If ith condition, ith condition meaning referring to the to these projectors. So each projector corresponds to a condition that there has been a bit flip, right? So this is called, this is called syndrome syndrome measurement, okay? Or syndrome diagnosis. Okay, now what is the nice thing about this syndrome diagnosis is the following. Uh, what happens to the state after you make the measurement, right? So, if I make the measurement of any one of these, uh, these these projectors, right, the state does not change. State does not change due to the syndrome measurement. Okay. Now, then the next, so this is the first step is syndrome diagnosis. The next step is recovery. Right? So the recovery procedure is relatively straightforward. It's that uh, depending on your error syndrome, your error syndrome tells you what has happened, right? So if, if you find that this is, this is, this expectation value is equal to one, this implies that you flip the ith qubit and that will correct your state. Okay, and we will see why this doesn't affect the, the state itself. Okay, we'll, we'll, look at this. we'll look at the circuit in a little bit. And so this procedure works perfectly, provided that bit flips occur only on one or none of the qubits. In the event that you have more than one bit flip, it won't work, right? Okay. Now, uh, let's see, let's uh, talk about phase flip errors. What is, what is a phase flip? We, right? So the phase flip is, as I've mentioned to you before, you have some state, right? Alpha zero plus beta one in your computational basis, a phase flip is when the relative phase between the two qubits uh, flips, okay? And if you work in the, in the Bell basis, right? So the Bell basis plus minus state is given as uh, zero plus minus one by root two, right? So in the Bell basis, you can write psi as, so if you, you can invert this relationship, you can write, uh, zero as 
uh, this and one as plus so superposition of these two states, right? So you, if you if you substitute these expressions for zero and one into into your state, right? What you will find is, let's see, we'll get alpha by root two minus and then beta by root two. Right? So we can write that as alpha plus beta by root two plus, right? And then plus alpha minus beta by root two. Minus. So a phase flip plus minus goes to minus plus, right? In this basis, you can see that if you have a phase flip that corresponds to bit flip in the bell basis, right? So in the bell basis, under the phase flip, you would go from alpha plus beta by root two, this would become the minus state, and this would become the plus state. So the question is that we want to protect against phase errors, right? So if you want to protect against phase errors, there is, this suggests that we can just work in the bell basis and we use the three qubit code or this three qubit redundancy, but now in the bell basis. So that means we define these logical states as follows. So your, your logical zero can be written as plus, 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 and your logical one can be written as minus, minus, minus. So then exactly the same procedure would follow through. You would have syndrome measurements, right? Operators for syndrome measurement, which would be of the same form. But now, of course, in the Bell basis, Um, okay, so I'm just, this is just to show that all the qubits are, are the same except for the ith qubit, which is flipped in this projector. Yeah. So, so like we're sure that there won't be a bit flip in the bell basis because it's no. But the thing is that what one does is, we concatenate all of these possibilities. So we'll we'll look at the we'll look at the circuit implementation in a second, right? And hopefully you will uh, you will see what is going on. Okay, just hold on for a little. Bit. Now, again, how do we encode our our state in the Bell basis uh, for this phase flip code? Let's write out the circuit for that. Can anybody think what the circuit might look like? If you want to uh, generate this state, the plus, plus, plus uh, state, right? Huh? What would you do? Hadamard. Hadamard is our, is, our, is, our, is our friend, right? So we do our usual C naught first, okay, and then we apply a Hardamard on each one of these um, qubits, right? So if you do this, what happens? Well, you end up with first, you end up with this state, right? At this stage after the first two C naught gates. And uh, then when you apply Hardamard, what happens? Alpha 0, 0, 0, for instance, goes to alpha by root two, right? So you replace each zero 
by a superposition of plus and minus states like this. Okay. And so what will you get? You'll get alpha by two root two. Now you'll get plus 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 minus 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 plus plus, right? Like this. How many of these? There'll be eight of these, right? So you are getting all of the permutations of the plus and minus states. This is what happens to alpha. What happens to the beta one? Exactly, you get, um, you get alternating signs depending on, um, depending on the number of, uh, plus, uh, depending on the number of minus qubits, right? So you will get plus, 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 right? Plus, minus, minus. But then if you have one minus, you'll get a negative sign. You'll get a negative phase. Okay? And so on. Now, okay, and again, um, we can def we can define uh, this thing uh, similar syndrome measurements. Uh, now, we would like to combine both of these into a code which allows us to correct for arbitrary bit flip and phase flip codes. Okay, so that is called the, that uh, code is called the short code. Of course, this short code is not the simplest code which is capable of doing this, but it is the first code which was discovered. And of course, it was discovered by Peter Short. And it also goes by the name of the nine qubit code because it, if we encode one logical qubit in nine qubits. So how do we do that? Okay. So first we perform an encoding uh, of each uh, qubit into the uh, bell basis to protect against phase errors. And then we uh, nest that coding within uh, the bit flip code. Okay, so let me, let me write down the state and then I'll explain. Then you will see what exactly uh, is going on. So your logical qubit is written as follows. One, one, one. Okay. And then similarly, your logical one is written as the same expression, but but with a relative negative sign. Okay, so now, what will happen if there is a, if there is a phase error on any one of the, on any one of the qubits, right? So phase error will cause one of these signs to change, right? So for instance, if there is a single phase error, again, this will correct for uh, an arbitrary error on a single qubit, whether it's a phase flip or a bit flip. But if it's on more than one qubit, it won't work. Okay, so we're going to look at only what happens if there is an error on one qubit. So let's say that any one qubit, there is a phase flip. If there is a phase flip, what would happen? If there is a phase flip, This, uh, this state would, you would get a change of sign, right? Zero, 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 plus, 
you'll get a change of sign. And then similarly, if there is a bit flip, well, then we know what to do, right? So then we have our, our, our projection operators with our syndrome measurements. We can, we can use that, uh, that technology. So again, let's see what the circuit is for making these states, right? So what do we want to do? Uh, we want to take our state, <coughs> which is alpha zero plus beta one, right? And we want to encode it into, uh, into this basis. So we want our final state to be alpha tilde zero plus beta tilde one or logical one. Okay, so let me draw the circuit. There are, uh, this is our state, this is our initial state, alpha zero plus beta one. And then we'll have our auxiliary uh, qubits. which do the right so if you 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 send it through these uh, through this circuit uh, you get the 000 plus 111 then you put the hardamart gate on each one of these putting the hardamart gate uh, does that transformation to the bell basis. Then, like I said, you nest these two procedures, right? So nesting means we have another level of complexity nested within this one. So that means we introduce two qubits here and we'll introduce uh, two more qubits at the next level, at the next level. So this will be zero, zero. Right, of the of the circuit. This kind of code con catenation. Right, so it's like you have taken one code and concatenated it with with another node. So concatenation is the term that you use, for instance when you want to take two strings in computing, right? And you want to uh, join them together. That process is called concatenation. Of course, in this case, concatenation has a slightly different um, manifestation in that it is a something that is uh, happening in a, uh, as a nested procedure rather than as a, a linear procedure, right? So rather than concatenation, I mean, I mean, I would call it something else. I would call it maybe nesting or something else. But anyways, now uh, what? Okay, so now let's try to see what happens uh, once again to this circuit. Right. So as you come out of the first two C naught gates, right? Let's say you end up with uh, with psi one over here, and then uh, we'll call whatever you get out here psi two. So psi one, right? Of course we know what that is. That's alpha zero zero zero, beta one one one, right? Now, when we act, let's look at what happens with this 
sub circuit right and this sub circuit acts only on the first qubit and then it concatenates two more qubits right so we have alpha 0 0 0 beta 1 1 1 right but we can we can just take these two qubits and put them aside for the time being right because because these operations over here at the second level of this uh, code will not affect the second and third qubit right and so so what will be the effect of of this uh, you will go from if you apply the hardamard you will go from alpha by plus beta you will go to the hardamard basis right and now what i'm doing is i'm working only with the first qubit i put the second and third qubit in hibernation right and then after this hardamard is applied so let me call this uh, state something else over here let me call it phi this state is phi okay with qubits 2 and 3 hibernated okay meaning they are there we we are just not worried about them we know what their state is and then once again we are applying the c not gates what will happen if we apply the c not gates in this order uh, we will get alpha plus beta by root 2 plus and now I'll just put the other two qubits in a different color. Right? And what are these two qubits that I put in a blue color? These are my, my second level over here, right? These qubits which I've introduced the second level of my code this is what i'm writing with the with the orange color okay so this is what happens uh, to the first qubit right the same thing happens to the second qubit in the in the middle and then the same thing happens to the third qubit again in the middle right and I'll leave it as an exercise for you to work out to show that the circuit uh, works as intended, meaning that it takes our state alpha plus beta and returns the state alpha times logical one and logical zero, where logical uh, zero is this state and logical one is this. Okay. But I hope that uh, you, you all can look at this and feel reasonably confident from what you know so far that this will indeed be the case. But it's not completely trivial. So you should definitely sit down and work it out because there are all kinds of signs, pluses and minuses uh, that one should take into account. Okay, so now um, what about what, how do we perform the uh, the error recovery, right? How do we how do we do the error recovery? So let's say that there is a bit flip error on the first qubit. Okay, so if there is a bit flip error on the first qubit, um, we, uh, okay, so before that, actually, let me go back a couple of steps and uh, tell you a little bit about um, 
the syndrome measurement from a slightly different perspective. So I skipped that part. Let me go back to that. So we'll go back for a for time being to our three qubit uh, code. So we remember that you have these three these three projectors, right? For the single bit flip. Now, instead of using these projectors, let's say that uh, we use a different set of observables. Okay, these observables are as follows: z1 and z2. Okay, z1 product z2. Now, whenever I have an expression of this form, what does this actually imply? Z1 is acting on the first qubit. Z2 is acting on the second qubit. And what is acting on the third qubit? Identity. Okay, so we'll be using this kind of an uh, of notation. So, for instance, Z2, Z3 will be I identity, then Z2, then Z3, and so on. Okay. Um, now, if we ask, what is the eigenvalue of this of this observable Z1, Z2? Okay, so just to be um, just for the sake of clarity, I'll put a one at the end. Okay, to indicate that fact that this is a three qubit operator. And now we are going back. We are talking about our uh, three qubit state. So, if I ask what is the eigenvalue of this of this operator, right? What are the possibilities? What are the possible eigenvalues? What is the eigenvalue of the z operator on on a single qubit? The Z operator, poly Z operator, poly Z operator is one zero. No, forget about the H bar. Just one minus one. So the eigenvalues of this of the Z operator are one plus and minus one, right? So what will be the eigenvalues of any product of, of, of Zs? It can only be plus one or minus one, right? You, can, you will have some combination of pluses and minuses that will give you at the end plus or minus one. So, uh, so let's say that we have, we use two of these observables. We use Z1, Z2, and then we use Z2, Z3, and we perform a measurement of both of these, right? So this, this gives us as a, as a result, if we perform a measurement plus or minus one, this gives us a, an eigenvalue plus or minus one, right? So each one of these is giving us a single bit of information. Uh, Utsav, can you just go and like, Tell those people to be quiet if they are still there. Or not. Okay. Huh? Go and shout at them. Yeah, so which one? Sorry?
no 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 so you do, you cannot do p1 p1 tensor identity p is already a 3 qubit operator so if you take p with tensor identity how many qubits are you acting on nine no so we are not talking about the nine qubit code yet we're talking about the uh, we are, we are looking at this 3 qubit case and instead of looking at these projectors i am talking about doing measurements on a different set of operators and then in the 9 qubit case because in the this this will lead to a simpler way of doing things what you are saying is 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 technically correct right that in the 9 qubit case you can construct a set of projectors as he said uh, which goes as a pi tensor identity on 3 tensor identity on 3 but uh, there is a uh, a simpler way of 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 performing the measurements okay so the reason for this would be uh, well we will we'll, we'll see as we go okay but yeah technically i mean i suppose you you are correct now and so so these are called polys by the way these are known as these are all the poly gates but uh, <coughs> when we talk about them uh, multiple strings of such operators we call them polys and each each such poly is giving us one bit of information right because it's plus or minus one so that's one one classical bit of information right so if we make a measurement of two such operators what do we get we get two bits of information right so z1 z2 z2 z3 together gives me two classical bits of information about the state right that means i will get two classical bits means i will get four possible outcomes right 0 1 2 3 these can be put in correspondence with each of the syndrome measurements p0 p1 p2 and p3 right because p0 p1 and p p2 and p3 their uh, measurement is gives me either 0 or 1 right and there are four such values right now um this this first measurement z1 and z2 uh, what is it uh, why are we doing it what does it what does it tell us physically uh, it basically says that what we are doing is compare the first and second qubit okay to see if they are the same or not what is it, why is that the case because let's take z1 z2 and act on on the state 0 0 0 or on the state 1 1 1 right what will be the eigen value plus 1 and if the first two qubits are different right then the eigen value will be minus 1 right so the result of z1 and z2 gives us a uh, comparison of the first and second qubits we can also uh rewrite uh, we can ask what is the spectral decomposition of this of this operator which will give us the same information but in a slightly more uh, a slightly more mathematical expression so first of all what is the z operator the z operator can be written as follows in terms of uh, projection operators right what is it does anybody remember if i want to write z as a sum of projection operators what will it be right 0 0 then minus 1 right 
so z1 z2 i can write as this this only and then tensor with it, the same expression but now acting on the second qubit okay and i'm not putting those indices because that will take up too much space so when you when you tensor all of this out right what will you get you will get 0000 right so if you look at the first two terms for instance that will give you this 0000 then you look at the uh second terms 1 1 1 that will give you plus right then we can write that as uh and then all of this is tensor with the identity on the third qubit so we'll put a identity here on the third qubit and then we'll get two other terms what are those two terms so i hope that uh you can see uh just to just to clarify that when i take this 0 0 and when i tensor it or to be a little bit more general i guess if i take ab and i tensor it with uh c d what do i get i get ac bd okay where a and c act on the first qubit b and uh, sorry a and b act on the first qubit so they are in the first slot and c and d act on the second qubit so they are in the second slot please make sure that you get this notation if you if you don't uh, you know there will be you will face confusion here okay so we get these two terms and then the cross terms will give us what the cross terms will get we'll get get, get a minus sign then we'll get 0 1 0 1 1 0 like this tensor minus so this is z1 z2 okay and we can see that it is a sum of we can think so this is a projector and this is also a projector this is the first term is projecting onto the case when the first two qubits are the same right so if the first two qubits are the same the action of this part of the operator on the state will be zero and if the first two qubits are different right so so these are these are projectors so in this sense z1 and z2 gives us a measurement of whether they are the same or not same thing for z2 z3 and z1 z2 and so on and so on okay <coughs> now uh so now what we can do is we can take these different sets and we can uh measure them in success okay so let's let's combine one of these right so let's say that we measure z1 z2 and this gives us plus 1 okay and then we measure z2 z3 this gives us minus 1 what can we say about uh about the about the state what information does it tell us about the state first qubit has the same in third qubit third qubit right so so we can say with confidence that it is the third qubit which has flipped right assuming what one qubit error because if there is a two qubit error then you can again get the uh well you would actually need a yeah you would need a two qubit error so assuming there are no two qubit errors this tells you that the third qubit has flipped uh 
assuming only one qubit error. Okay. What if both of these give you a uh, minus one? Right? Then that tells you that it is Z2, right? Z2 has been. Or qubit 2 has been. Uh, qubit 2, Q2. Okay? Now, again, one might ask in doing all these measurements, am I not destroying? Destroying my state. Okay. Um, so, so let's let's look at what happens when you take uh, one of these measurements and act on the state. Okay. So if you take Z one Z two, right, and you act on uh, the state alpha. Well, I'll write it like, how should I write it? Well, let me just say zero, zero, zero plus beta one, 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 right? And uh, what is the answer? This is, this is an eigenstate of Z1 and Z2, right? So if I act on this with Z1 and Z2, Will the state collapse into something else? No. Why? Because it's already in, a, in an eigenstate of the operator that is being measured. So if you measure an operator A on some state psi, right? what does the measurement postulate tell you? Measurement postulate tells you that the state collapses into an eigenstate of A, right? But if you are already in an eigenstate of A, then it, your state will not be changed. So this is the sense in which these measurements are not changing our state. Is this Aditya? Is this, is this making sense? Huh? Little, little bit, no? That's why I could I could feel that there was a disturbance in the force. Um, at this stage, Star Wars is also so old that none of you get these get these references, na? Hey, na? Aajkal to matlab Fast and Furious wale references ye aap logon ko shayad samajh mein aayenge ya wo bhi matlab classic ho gaya. Hmm? वो भी तो पूरा मतलब रामायण की तरह बन गया ना कुछ इन 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 मे बी लाइक द ट्वेंटीएथ वर्जन और एपिसोड ऑफ फास्ट एंड क्यूरियस यू सी लाइक विंड डीजल लाइंग ऑन अ बेड ऑफ एरोस और समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड समबडी लाइक सिटिंग एट हिज फीट सेइंग पितामह ज्ञान दीजिए कि गाड़ी कैसे चलाऊं तेज तेज Anyways, Aditya, what is the measurement postulate? Just state it for me. What happens when you measure an operator A on some state side? So it's that it's this uh, it's state collapses into the eigenvector of that eigenvector of that state A of that operator A. Now, if the operator A is Hermitian. Okay, what can you say about the eigenstates of that operator? It's, um, it's real and positive. Right, but what about the eigenstates? Eigenstates. They are they can be weight perfect. Orthogonal. They are orthogonal. What else? So no, that's that's you can normalize any state. All of the eigenstates of an Hermitian operator. Span the entire Hilbert space. They so they give you a basis for your Hilbert space. This is the important part. So you can take any state psi 
and write it as a superposition of eigenstates of this operator A. If A is, A is Hermitian, right? And all of these operators are Hermitian. Z1, Z2, Z1, Z2, all of these operators are Hermitian. And moreover, the states that we are measuring are eigenstates, so there is no collapse. So you understand that if you measure, if you have a qubit which is in the spin up state, fine. I measure the uh, poly Z on that qubit. What will be the state of that qubit after measurement? Plus minus. No. If it's in the zero state, up state, right? That is already an eigenstate of the Z operator. No? It's an eigenstate of Z with eigenvalue plus one. So there is no reason for it to collapse into anything else. No? There are two eigenstates of Z, zero and one. If I start with zero, I'll stay in zero. No? Make sense or not? Think of it like this, that you have a block sphere, right? You think of this block sphere picture. Your, your, your state is a dot on this block sphere, right? And there are two eigenstates of, and you're talking about measuring zero and one. Now I know many of you get this, but I'm just emphasizing this, uh, and so your, your state psi, let's say your dot is closer to the North Pole than it is to the South Pole, right? Now, when you make a measurement of Z, is your state going to be more likely to collapse into the North Pole, which is zero, or the South Pole, which is one? North Pole. And if your state, so as you go closer and closer to the North Pole, the probability of collapse will become equal to one. You can think of it that way if you want. When you're talking about plus and minus states, plus and minus are eigenstates of which operator? Yes. X. Plus and minus are eigenstates of X and I, I, Y. Okay. So if you are measuring, if you are measuring the X or the IY state or IY operator <coughs> and your big initial state is zero or one, then it will collapse into which state? If you, if your, if your state is initially to begin with zero or one and you measure the X operator, what will be the outcomes? What are the eigenstates of the X operator? Plus, plus, and plus and minus. So what will be the outcomes? Either the plus state or the minus state. No? And with probability, half each. Okay. I, if you don't understand this, uh, Zoom people and people here, please just think about this. This is a seemingly very minor point. But it lies at the at the founding at the base of everything that is going on. The fact that you can perform a measurement of these operators without destroying the state. Because if you cannot do that, then nothing that you want to do as far as correcting your errors without changing the state, without destroying the quantum correlations, is possible. Okay. So I have a question. Yeah. So the, like, this is fine, but like, are we able to like, uh, like measure that whether a system is in plus or minus? If we are doing x or mm -hmm. one or minus one state, are mm -hmm. we able to measure that without having that state? No, no. So that depends on what your state is. This is the whole point, no? That see in in this setup, all our states are superposition of zero and one. So if I measure any of the Z operators, 
right? I'm always in some eigen state of those operators. Huh? So my state will not collapse. So you don't collapse. Right. Have you able to make out that it is in the plus state or the issue is if it is in one state, you're going to say that there are no the bits are the same. But the thing is, the, so so the thing is, so here's the thing, now. That okay. So let me let me uh, show you again. If you take Z1 and Z2 and you act on alpha 0, 0, 0 plus beta 1, 1, 1, what is the, what is the result? It's equal to alpha 0, 0, 0 plus beta 1, 1, 1, right? Is the state changed? But do we know that it's changed? Like if we know that the state didn't change, then we can say the bits are the same, but we do not know that. Right? No, no, but but, but as far as the mathematical theory is concerned, these two operators will not cause the state to change. No? Practically. No, no. So practically there might be some some errors in the measurement, in the in the way you implement this measurement. Which might constitute a, a separate source of errors. Right? So there might be an error in the syndrome measurement itself. But assuming that the syndrome measurement can be performed without making an error, right? Now, your question actually has a very nice answer. I just didn't go into it because it requires a little bit of math, which is it involves something called the notion of a fidelity and mixed states. Right? So exactly what you're asking is that uh, how can you tell whether there is an error which is big or which is small? Okay. Why? Because these quantum states live in this continuous space. Right? So let's say that you have a bit flip error which is generated by which, which uh, poly? Aditya, bit flip is caused by which uh, poly? X, excellent. Now, if I start with the with the state plus, and I act on it with X, what happens to that state? But is the qubit flipped? The qubit is flipped, no? Zero goes to one and one goes to zero. But nothing happens to that state. On the other hand, if I start with the zero state and I and there is a single qubit error generated by x, what happens? It goes to one. If I if if the error no no x acting on zero will give me one. No? So my point is that how do I quantify? So in one case, in both cases, an error is taking place, which is a bit flip is happening. I know that for sure, right? But in one case, the bit flip leaves the state invariant. In the second case, the state becomes orthogonal to itself, right? So in the first place, I should not worry about that error. No? I don't care because I only care about those errors which cause my state to change into something that is orthogonal to itself. So this question is answered, this is answered by the notion of fidelity, right? Fidelity is the term that one uses to describe uh, the quality of sound, right? Normally, or a signal, fidelity. How true is it to the original? So, uh, so for this fidelity, is basically the overlap of two states. Okay, so if you take two states psi and phi and you overlap, you take the inner product. If those two states are the same, you get one, otherwise you get zero, right? So the fidelity is essentially given by, by this quantity. So now what one does is the following. You write down an operator which looks like this. I'm assuming that all of you can see what I'm writing.
Okay. What is this operator doing? Our state phi or state psi is the state of interest. Okay, this is the one that we, we care about. The number p is what? Number p is the probability. What is it the probability of? Of bit flip. Right? What does the first term tell you? The first term tells you that no bit flip is happening. If there is no bit flip, then the first term tells you that your state doesn't change. What about the second term? The second term tells you that there is a bit flip that is expressed by the presence of the X operator. But note the way in which this projector is constructed. We take our state psi and we flip the bit. So we get X psi. This is the state with the flip bit, right? So if you want the projector for the state psi, you get, you take bra psi. So you take ket psi and then adjoint ket psi. If you want to construct the projector for the flipped state, what do you get, take? You take the adjoint of the X psi. So you will get what? You will get X. Uh, ket psi, adjoint psi, and then again, adjoint x. What is adjoint x? x, x only. No? So this row that you have here, right? This row is what we refer to as a channel. Okay. It represents, uh, so something is happening. You are sending your state through it, through from point A to point B, right? And presumably it comes out on the other end, something happens to it, right? Either there is a bit flip or there's no bit flip. If there is a bit flip, that is represented by the, by the second term, otherwise it's represented by the first term. And so this row is an operator, right? And it's called a, I mean, that's how you represent channels in quantum information. Okay, now, how do I define the fidelity? Okay, so the fidelity is written, defined as follows. And technically what rho is, rho is what is called a mixed state. And this is the Greek letter rho, by the way, not p. Okay, so the fidelity is defined as, as this expression. So the fidelity is a, a uh, function of two things, two inputs. It takes in a pure state psi and it takes in a, a mixed state rho. Okay, and that's what this rho is. This is a mixed state. Okay, and don't worry about what mixed states are for the time. Now we can do this calculation by putting the expression for, for rho uh, in our inner product, right? So we get psi and then we put one minus P, right? Plus X P times X psi, psi X. Uh, right? Okay, so this is our fidelity. Now what will happen the first the first term will just give us one minus P, right? And the second term will give us the following expectation value of P times the expectation value of X acting on Psi whole square. Okay. You get psi x expectation value psi and then psi x expect, expectation value of, so you get that twice. So that's why I'm writing that as whole square. And there's a magnitude because there is an adjoint in there. Okay. Now, both of these terms are positive definite. So this fidelity is always greater than or equal to zero. Right? 
and uh, the second term. So the second term is also non-negative. When is the second term zero? When psi is equal to either zero or one, the second term goes to zero, right? Right. So now the second term is positive definite. So that means the minimum value it can have is zero. Right. So the minimum value of the fidelity is what? It's a root of one minus p. Right. This is the minimum value of the fidelity in this particular case. Now, let's go back to that uh, that three qubit. Uh, Encoding alpha zero 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 beta one one one, where we did this probability analysis, right? And what did our uh, what did our probability what was the probability of having a bit flip on either one or less of the qubits? It was I'll write down the expression. It was one minus p cube plus three p one minus p square, right? We derived this in the last lecture, I believe. Right, so we can write this in terms of rho. Okay, we can translate this into an expression for rho, and then we can calculate the minimum fidelity. The minimum fidelity turns out to be one minus three p square plus two p cube. I'll leave it as an exercise for you for now, and then in the next class we'll work it out. If which is tomorrow, if you don't see how to get this, and this fidelity, uh, this is the minimum value, okay. And remember that only when p is less than or equal to half does the three qubit encoding have any advantage, right? And um, so. So the, this this fidelity should be more than zero, right? And the fidelity will be more than zero if p is less than half, right? So this tells you the same thing that when p is less than half, your fidelity is greater than zero. Now, to I don't I'm not sure whether or not it answers, no. yeah. <laughs> or whether I've led you down a path that is long enough that you don't remember where you started from. Yeah. All right. So, what I have talked about in the till now in the in the previous lecture, and everybody can hear me in the in the classroom, right? Okay. Is that uh, error correction is uh, all about redundancy, right? So, well, first of all, okay, let me just go over. Some of these things you might have forgotten. There are two kinds of errors: phase flip, phase flip, and bit flip. This is clear. Are there any doubts about this? Right. So, so bit bit flip you can understand as uh, going from the zero state to the one state. Phase flip you can understand as going from the plus state to the minus state, as a bit flip in the in the uh, bell bell basis, right? So this is called the bell basis, the plus minus. So the simplest approach to error correction involves uh, using redundancy, right? So you encode a single qubit, a single logical qubit, using three uh, physical qubits. So that way, if one of those qubits undergoes an error, uh, you will still have two which are unaffected, and maybe with some, uh, maybe there is some way then. In which you can you can recover, right? So, what is what is the process? Now let me uh, go to. So this is. Let's see. Right. So then we also talked about how to encode uh, how to encode. This logical qubit in in these physical qubits, right? This is your circuit, 
and as i explained um if you take this circuit right and you apply the first c not gate so you write psi as alpha 0 plus beta 1 you apply the first c not gate what happens this you start with this state you apply the first c not gate now when you apply the c not gate uh this is the this is the control and this is the target right so this first bit is the control the second bit is the target so in this state nothing happens because the control is zero right in this state the target is flipped because the control is one right so you get beta 110 then you apply the c not gate again using uh, this as your control and this is your target and once again so nothing happens to the first state uh, but the second state goes to 111 right so you end up in this in this state right and this is called a uh, this is called a cat state there is a word for it states of this form are called cat state so typically if you have a n qubit um state which looks like this something like 1 by root 2 all zeros and all ones so first of all this is a highly entangled state right there is no you cannot factorize it right so it's highly entangled and the reason we refer to this as a cat state right because we are actually referring to schrodinger's cat that cat okay because in the limit of large n right your system becomes more and more macroscopic right so if you imagine that that you have a system which is consists of a very large number of qubits like enough to make a cat when you put that system in this kind of a state this would this would correspond to let's say this could be something like dead and this could be alive right so this this would be the uh statement of schrodinger's cat right okay so now let's talk about um error correction so how can we correct errors in our in our system okay so we have to perform a measurement without performing a measurement we can't tell if there is been an error or not but the problem is that typically measurements will cause your quantum state to collapse you will lose quantum you will lose the quantum correlation right and you don't want that to happen right so you want to perform measurements but you want to perform them in a way uh that your quantum state or at least the information the quantum information that you want is left undisturbed and you can do that uh using these operators so right so these are projection operators okay i hope that uh, you all remember what a projection operator is right it a projection operator is something of the form bra phi ket phi right and so this is a projection operator 0 0 0 and this is another projection operator right what will be the effect of this projection operator so let me say that i have a uh, is it too small i think maybe it's a little bit small i'll try to write a little bigger so that you can see more clearly what will be the effect of this projection operator on our logical on our encoded state right so this is our encoded state and we act on this state with p not right so we have this guy 
and acting on on this fellow right now the first set of 0 0 0 that operator will annihilate the second the second component because 0 0 0 is orthogonal to 1 1 1 and similarly 1 1 1 will annihilate 0 0 0 so you will be left with with psi right so this means there is no error right similarly we can construct other projection operators okay and here we are given a set of three projection operators right and we want to look at in this case we are first looking at uh, i'm sorry about you guys but the people on on zoom can see this just fine uh so then we have kya kar rahe hain kisi dusre desh mein chal rahe hain ukraine ukraine Ukraine. It has a power backup, but the but the this thing is small, no? Isn't it small? It's smaller than this also. कुछ दिखेगा नहीं इसमें तुम्हें. Um, ऐसा करते हैं. We रहने देते हैं. ठीक है. Um. और कल की क्लास भी मैं जूम पे कर दूंगा एंड आई विल लाइक टॉक टू आर मीन दिस थिंग आर ऑफिस स्टाफ एंड टेल देम टू लाइक दिस प्लेस दिस रूम हैज ए यूपीएस बैकअप ओके बट बिकॉज इट्स नॉट इन यूज वेरी ऑफन दैट दैट दो बैटरीज देर बीन सम प्रॉब्लम और फिर नो बडी हैज गॉट इट फिक्स ओके so yeah this was a flop show sorry about that anyways um i i even connected the projector see i even connected it to this um x this thing which which i was told has a backup but maybe it does तो चलते हैं फिर है ना क्या करें तो करना ही पड़ेगा लाइक अनदर थिंग आई कैन डू इज लाइक आई कैन जस्ट गो टू माय ऑफिस यू गाइस कैन गो टू योर रूम्स यू हैव यू हैव कंप्यूटर्स डज एवरीबॉडी हैव अ हैव अ पीसी और अ लैपटॉप हियर हाँ सबके पास है नवीन है ना तो यू गाइस कैन गो देर Shall we continue this class? Huh? A ten fifteen minute, le lo. Why? Mobile is fine with you. Pakka? Mobile will go. So do it. Do it on mobile basis. You Zoom people are lucky. good good idea that you didn't uh, come to class today ye bechare yahan pe baithe hue hain what they are doing right they are using their mobile because power is failing and projector is not working anyway enough joking around so uh, please let me know have you all uh, joined up if there is any problem yeah i can ha huh? who knows maybe i'll just put it on like that na 
वहाँ बहुत है And who is excited about tomorrow? By the way, March tenth. Who is excited? Excited? Who is 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 excited? झाड़ू चल रहा है क्या चनी नहीं आ रहा चनी का परफॉर्मेंस तो बहुत अच्छा था अरे चलो एनी वे लॉग इन हो गए कोई लॉग इन नहीं हो रहे आई डोंट सी एनी पीपल हैव यू ऑल ज्वाइन ओके सो लेट्स लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद आवर क्वांटम एरर करेक्शन क्लास सो नाउ वी हैव अ सेट ऑफ फोर अदर प्रोजेक्टर्स ठीक है व्हिच हैव द सिमिलर फॉर्म One zero zero. Can you guys see it on your phone? Okay, good. Right. So this, what is this projector doing? Right. Uh, this is projecting onto the case when there is a single bit flip. Right. There is a single bit flip on the first qubit. So if there is a single bit flip on the first qubit. what will what will happen to psi psi will go to 100 0 11 right and so that's what this second this projector is doing this state is 100 and this state is 011 so once again if you act on and so let me call this i don't know what to call it let me call it psi prime if you act if your state happens to be psi prime Psi tilde prime, and you act on it p one, you will get psi psi tilde prime. Okay, so there's no one over there. Right, and what happens if you take your projector p naught and you act on the state um, psi tilde prime? What will you get? zero right so similarly we can define projectors for a single bit flip on qubit 2 then we can define a projector for a single bit flip on qubit 3 okay now so if you measure if you measure uh your your state right you will get zero if the condition if the ith condition is false right ith condition means i goes from 0 1 2 3 right and one if it is true if ith condition ith condition meaning referring to the to these projectors so each projector corresponds to a condition that there has been a bit flip right so this is called this is called syndrome syndrome measurement okay or syndrome diagnosis okay now what is the nice thing about this syndrome diagnosis is the following uh what happens to the state after you make the measurement right so if i make the measurement of any one of these uh these these projectors right the state does not change
state does not change due to the syndrome measurement. Okay. Now, then the next, so this is the first step is syndrome diagnosis. The next step is recovery. Right? So the recovery procedure is relatively straightforward. It's that uh, depending on your error syndrome, your error syndrome tells you what has happened, right? So if, if you find that this, is, this, is, this expectation value is equal to one, this implies that you flip the ith qubit, and that will correct your state, okay? And we will see why this doesn't affect the, the state itself, okay? We'll, we'll, look at this, we'll look at the circuit in a little bit. And so this procedure works perfectly, provided that bit flips occur only on one or none of the qubits. In the event that you have more than one bit flip, it won't work, right? Okay, now uh, let's see, let's uh, talk about phase flip errors. What is, what is a phase flip, We right? So the phase flip is, as I've mentioned to you before, you have some state, right? Alpha zero plus beta one, in your computational basis, a phase flip is when the relative phase between the two qubits uh, flips, okay? And if you work in the, in the Bell basis, right? So the Bell basis plus minus state is given as uh, zero plus minus one by root two, right? So in the Bell basis, you can write psi as, so if you, you can invert this relationship, you can write uh, zero as uh, this and one as plus so superposition of these two states, right? So you, if, you, if you substitute these expressions for zero and one into, into your state, right? What you will find is, let's see, we'll get alpha by root two minus and then beta by root two. Right. So we can write that as alpha plus beta by root two plus, right? And then plus alpha minus beta by root two. Minus. So a phase flip plus minus goes to minus plus, right? In this basis, you can see that if you have a phase flip, that corresponds to bit flip in the Bell basis, right? So in the Bell basis, under the phase flip, you would go from alpha plus beta by root two, this would become the minus state, and this would become the plus state. So the question is that we want to protect against phase errors, right? So if you want to protect against phase errors, there is, this suggests that we can just work in the Bell basis and we use the three qubit code or this three qubit redundancy, but now in the Bell basis. So that means we define these logical states as follows. So your, your logical zero can be written as plus, 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 and your logical one can be written as minus, minus, minus. So then 
exactly the same procedure would follow through. You would have syndrome measurements, right? Operators for syndrome measurement, which would be of the same form. But now, of course, in the Bell basis. Um, okay, so I'm just, this is just to show that all the qubits are, are the same except for the ith qubit, which is flipped in this projector. Yeah. So, so like we're sure that there won't be a bit flip in the bell basis because time is right? No, no, no. So, one second. One second. Class is going. You have no idea how how much power a man has when he can hang up on his wife like that. Trust me, you don't want to try it in real life. You know, unless there's a damn good excuse. And being in class is a good excuse. Of course, you won't be happy later. She'll be like, you hang, do hung up on me, but I, but I had class. You know. Okay. So your question is that can you not have a... Uh, yeah, of course. Of course you can. No, no, no. no. But the thing is that what one does is we concatenate all of these possibilities. So we'll we'll look at the we'll look at the circuit implementation in a second, right? And hopefully you will uh, you will see what is going on. Okay, just hold on for a little. Bit. Now, again, how do we encode our our state in the Bell basis uh, for this phase flip code? Let's write down the circuit for that. Can anybody think what the circuit might look like? If you want to uh, generate this state, the plus, plus, plus uh, state, right? Huh? What would you do? Hadamard. Hadamard is our, is, our, is, our, is our friend, right? So we do our usual C naught first, okay, and then we apply a Hardamard on each one of these um, qubits, right? So if you do this, what happens? Well, you end up with first, you end up with this state, right? At this stage after the first two C0 gates. And uh, then when you apply a Hardamard, what happens? Alpha 0, 0, 0, for instance, goes to alpha by root two, right? So you replace each zero by a superposition of plus and minus states like this, okay? And so what will you get? You'll get alpha by two root two. Now you'll get plus, 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 minus, 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 plus, plus, right? Like this. How many of these? There'll be eight of these, right? So you are getting all of the permutations of the plus and minus states. This is what happens to alpha. What happens to the beta one? Exactly, you get um, you get alternating signs depending on um, depending on the number of uh, plus uh, depending on the number of minus qubits, right? So you will get plus plus plus, right? Plus minus minus, but then if you have one minus, you'll get a negative sign. 
we'll get a negative phase. Okay, and so on. Now, okay, and again, um, we can def we can define uh, this thing uh, similar syndrome measurements. Uh, now, we would like to combine both of these into a code which allows us to predict for arbitrary bit flip and phase flip codes. Okay, so that is called the, that uh, code is called the short code. Of course, this short code is not the simplest code which is capable of doing this, but it is the first code which was discovered. And of course, it was discovered by Peter Short. And it also goes by the name of the nine qubit code because it, if we encode one logical qubit in nine qubits. So how do we do that? Okay. So first we perform an encoding uh, of each uh, qubit into the uh, bell basis to protect against phase errors. And then we uh, nest that coding within uh, the bit flip code. Okay, so let me, let me write down the state and then I'll explain. Then you will see what exactly uh, is going on. So your logical qubit is written as follows. One, one, one. Okay. And then similarly, your logical one is written as the same expression, but but with a relative negative sign. Okay, so now what will happen if there is a, if there is a phase error on any one of the, on any one of the qubits, right? So phase error will cause one of these signs to change, right? So for instance, if there is a single phase error, again, this will correct for uh, an arbitrary error on a single qubit, whether it's a phase flip or a bit flip. But if it's on more than one qubit, it won't work. Okay, so we're going to look at only what happens if there is an error on one qubit. So let's say that any one qubit, there is a phase flip. If there is a phase flip, what would happen? If there is a phase flip, This, uh, this state would, you would get a change of sign, right? Zero, zero, zero plus you'd get a change of sign. And then similarly, if there is a bit flip, well, then we know what to do, right? So then we have our, our, our projection operators with our syndrome measurements. We can, we can use that, uh, that technology. So again, let's see what the circuit is for making these states, right? So what do we want to do? Uh, we want to take our state, <coughs> which is alpha zero plus beta one, right? And we want to encode it into, uh, into this basis. So we want our final state to be alpha tilde zero plus beta tilde one or logical one. Okay, so let me draw the circuit. There are, uh, this is our state. This is our initial state, alpha zero 
plus beta 1. And then we'll have our auxiliary uh, qubits. which do the right so if you 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 send it through these uh, through this circuit uh, you get the 000 plus 111 then you put the hardamart gate on each one of these putting the hardamart gate uh, does that transformation to the bell basis. Then, like I said, you nest these two procedures, right? So nesting means we have another level of complexity nested within this one. So that means we introduce two qubits here and we'll introduce uh, two more qubits at the next level. At the next level. So this will be zero, zero. Right, of the of the circuit. This kind of code con catenation. Right, so it's like you have taken one code and concatenated it with with another node. So concatenation is the term that you use, for instance when you want to take two strings in computing, right? And you want to uh, join them together. That process is called concatenation. Of course, in this case, concatenation has a slightly different um, manifestation in that it is a something that is uh, happening in a, uh, as a nested procedure rather than as a, a linear procedure. Right? So rather than concatenation, I mean, I mean, I would call it something else. I would call it maybe nesting or something else. But anyways, now uh, what, okay, so now let's try to see what happens uh, once again to this circuit. Right. So as you come out of the first two C naught gates, right? Let's say you end up with uh, with psi one over here, and then uh, we'll call whatever you get out here psi two. So psi one, right? Of course we know what that is. That's alpha zero zero zero, beta one one one, right? Now, when we act, let's look at what happens with this sub circuit, right? And this sub circuit acts only on the first qubit and then it concatenates two more qubits, right? So we have alpha zero, 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 beta one, 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 right? But we can, we can just take these two qubits and put them aside for the time being, right? Because, because these operations over here at the second level of this uh, code will not affect the second and third qubit, right? And so, so what will be the effect of, of this? Uh, you will go from if you apply the hard amard, you'll go from alpha by plus beta, you'll go to the hard amard basis, right? And now what I'm doing is I'm working only with the first qubit. I put the second and third qubit in hibernation, right? 
and then after this hardamard is applied so let me call this uh, state something else over here let me call it phi this state is phi okay with qubits 2 and 3 hibernated okay meaning they are there we we are just not worried about them we know what their state is and then once again we are applying the c not gates what will happen if we apply the c not gates in this order uh we will get alpha plus beta by root 2 plus and now i'll just put the other two qubits in a different color right and what are these two qubits that i have put in a blue color these are my my second level over here right these qubits which i have introduced at the second level of my code this is what i'm writing with the with the orange color okay so this is what happens uh to the first qubit right the same thing happens to the second qubit in the in the middle and then the same thing happens to the third qubit again in the middle right and i'll leave it as an exercise for you to work out to show that the circuit uh works as intended meaning that it takes our state alpha plus beta and returns the state alpha times logical 1 and logical 0 where logical Uh, zero is this state and logical one is this okay but i hope that uh, you you all can look at this and feel reasonably confident from what you know so far that this will indeed be the case but it's not completely trivial so you should definitely sit down and work it out because there are all kinds of signs pluses and minuses uh, that one should take into account okay so now um what about what how do we perform the uh, the error recovery right how do we how do we do the error recovery so let's say that there is a bit flip error on the first qubit okay so if there is a bit flip error on the first qubit um we uh okay so before that actually let me go back a couple of steps and uh tell you a little bit about um the syndrome measurement from a slightly different perspective so i skip that part let me go back to that so we'll go back for a, for a time being to our three qubit uh, code so we remember that you have these three these three projectors right for the single bit flip now instead of using these projectors let's say that uh, we use a different set of observables okay these observables are as follows z1 and z2 okay z1 product z2 now whenever i have an expression of this form what does this actually imply z1 is acting on the first qubit z2 is acting on the second qubit and what is acting on the third qubit 
identity. Okay, so we'll be using this kind of an uh, of notation. So, for instance, Z two Z three will be I identity then Z two then Z three and so on. Okay. Um, now. If we ask what is the eigenvalue of this of this observable z1 z2, okay. So just to be um, just for the sake of clarity, I'll put a one at the end, okay, to indicate that fact that this is a three qubit operator. And now we are going back. We are talking about our uh, three qubit state. So, if I ask what is the eigenvalue of this of this operator, right? What are the possibilities? What are the possible eigenvalues? What is the eigenvalue of the z operator on on a single qubit? The z operator, poly z operator, poly z operator. Is one zero? No, forget about the h bar. Just one minus one. So the eigenvalues of this of the z operator are minus plus and minus one, right? So what will be the eigenvalues of any product of 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 z's? It can only be plus one or minus one. Right, you can you will have some combination of pluses and minuses that will give you at the end plus or minus one. So, uh, so let's say that we have we use two of these observables. We use z1, z2, and then we use z2, z3, and we perform a measurement of both of these. Right. So this. This gives us as a as a result. If we perform a measurement plus or minus one, this gives us a, an eigenvalue plus or minus one, right? So each one of these is giving us a single bit of information. Uh, Utsav, can you just go and like tell those people to be quiet if they are still there, or? Okay. Huh? Go and shout at them. Yeah. So, which one? Sorry. No, 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 no. So you do, you cannot do P one P one tensor identity. P is already a three qubit operator. So if you take P with tensor identity, how many qubits are you acting on? Nine. No, so we are not talking about the nine qubit code yet. We're talking about the uh, we are, we are looking at this three qubit case, and instead of looking at these projectors, I am talking about doing measurements on a different set of operators. And then in the nine qubit case, because in the this this will lead to a simpler way of doing things. What you are saying is 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 technically correct, right? That in the nine qubit case, you can construct a set of projectors, as he said, uh, which goes as uh, pi tensor identity on three tensor identity on three, but uh, there is a uh, a simpler way of, of of performing the measurements. Okay, so the reason for this would be uh, well, we'll 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 see as we go. 
Okay, but yeah, technically, I mean, I suppose you you are correct. Now and so so these are called polys, by the way. These are known as these are all the poly gates, but. Uh, <coughs> when we talk about them uh, multiple strings of such operators we call them polys and each each such poly is giving us one bit of information right because it's plus or minus one so that's one one classical bit of information right so if we make a measurement of two such operators what do we get we get two bits of information right so z1 z2 z2 z3 together gives me two classical bits of information about the state right that means i will get two classical bits means i will get four possible outcomes right 0 1 2 3 these can be put in correspondence with each of the syndrome measurements p0 p1 p2 and p3 right because p0 p1 and p, p2 and p3 their uh, measurement is gives me either 0 or 1 right and there are four such values right now um, this this first measurement z1 and z2 what is it? Uh, why are we doing it? What does it? What does it tell us physically? Uh, it basically says that what we are doing is compare the first and second qubit, okay, to see if they are the same or not. What does? It, why is that the case? Because let's take Z one, Z two and act on, on the state 0, 0, 0, or on the state 1, 1, 1, right? What will be the eigenvalue? Plus 1. And if the first two qubits are different, right? Then the eigenvalue will be minus 1, right? So the result of Z1 and Z2 gives us a uh, comparison of the first and second qubits. We can also uh, rewrite, uh, we can ask what is the spectral decomposition of this, of this operator, which will give us the same information, but in a slightly more, uh, a slightly more mathematical expression. So first of all, what is the Z operator? The Z operator can be written as follows in terms of uh, projection operators, right? What is it? Does anybody remember? If I want to write Z as a sum of projection operators, what will it be? Right? Zero, zero, then minus one, one right? So Z1, Z2, I can write as this, this only. And then tensor with it, the same expression, but now acting on the second qubit. Okay, and I'm not putting those indices because that will take up too much space. So when you, when you tensor all of this out, Right? What will you get? You will get 0, 0, 0, 0, right? So if you look at the first two terms, for instance, that will give you this 0, 0, 0, 0. Then you look at the uh, second terms, 1, 1, 1, 1, that will give you plus, right? Then we can write that as. Uh, and then all of this is tensor with the identity on the third qubit. So we'll put a identity here on the third qubit. And then we'll get two other terms. 
what are those two terms so i hope that uh, you can see uh, just to just to clarify that when i take this 0 0 and when i tensor it or to be a little bit more general i guess if i take ab and i tensor it with uh, c d what do i get i get ac bd okay where a and c act on the first qubit b and uh, sorry a and b act on the first qubit so they are in the first slot and c and d act on the second qubit so they are in the second slot please make sure that you get this notation if you if you don't uh, you know there will be you will face confusion later okay so we get these two terms and then the cross terms will give us what the cross terms will get will get a, will get a minus sign then we'll get 0 1 0 1 then 1 0 1 0 like this tensor minus so this is z1 z2 okay and we can see that it is a sum of we can think so this is a projector and this is also a projector this is the first term is projecting onto the case when the first two qubits are the same right so if the first two qubits are the same the action of this part of the operator on the state will be zero and if the first two qubits are different right so so these are these are projectors so in this sense z1 and z2 gives us a measurement of whether they are the same or not same thing for z2 z3 and z1 z2 and so on and so forth. okay <coughs> now uh, so now what we can do is we can take these different sets and we can uh, measure them in success okay so let's let's combine one of these right so let's say that we measure z1 z2 and this gives us plus 1 okay and then we measure z2 z3 this gives us minus 1 what can we say about uh, about the about the state what information does this tell us about the state third qubit right so so we can say with confidence that it is the third qubit which has flipped right assuming what one qubit error because if there is a two qubit error then you can again get the uh, well, you would actually need a, yeah, you would need a two qubit error. So assuming there are no two qubit errors, this tells you that the third qubit has flipped. Assuming only one qubit error okay what if both of these give you a uh, minus one right then that tells you that it is z2 right z2 has been, or qubit 2 has been. Uh, qubit 2 q2 okay now again one might ask in doing all these measurements am i not destroying destroying my state okay um so so let's let's look at what happens when you take uh one of these measurements and act on the state okay so if you take z1 z2 
right? And you act on uh, the state alpha. Well, I'll write it like how should I write it? Well, let me just say zero 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 plus beta one one one, right? And uh, what is the answer? This is this is an eigenstate of z1 and z2, right? So if I act on this with z1 and z2, will the state collapse into something else? No. Why? Because it's already in, a, in an eigenstate of the operator that is being measured. So if you measure an operator A on some state psi, right? What does the measurement postulate tell you? Measurement postulate tells you that the state collapses into an eigenstate of A, right? But if you are already in an eigenstate of A, then it, your state will not be changed. So this is the sense in which these measurements are not changing our state. Is this Aditya? Is this is this making sense? Huh? Little bit, na? No? That's why I could I could feel that there was a disturbance in the force. Um, at this stage, Star Wars is also so old that none of you get these get these references, na? Hey, na? Aajkal to matlab fast and furious wale references ye aap logon ko shayad samajh mein aayenge ya wo bhi matlab classic ho gaya hai hmm wo bhi to pura matlab ramayan ki tarah ban gaya na kuch in 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 maybe like the 20th uh, version or episode of fast and furious you will see like wind diesel lying on a bed of arrows or something like that and somebody like Sitting at his feet saying, Pitama, Gyan Dijiye ki gadi kaise chalao face to face. Anyways. Aditya, what is the measurement postulate? Just state it for me. What happens when you measure an operator A on some state side? So it's that, it's, it's, uh, it's state collapses. Eigenvector of that state A, of that operator A. Now, if the operator A is Hermitian, what can you say about the eigenstates of that operator? It's, um, it's real and positive. Right, but what about the eigenstates? They, are, they can be made perpendicular. They are orthogonal. What else? So, unit length. No, that's that's you can normalize any state. All of the eigenstates of an Hermitian operator span the entire Hilbert space. They so they give you a basis for your Hilbert space. This is the important part. So you can take any state psi and write it as a superposition of eigenstates of this operator A. If A is, a is Hermitian. Right? And all of these operators are Hermitian. Z1, Z2, Z1, Z2, all of these operators are Hermitian. And moreover, the states that we are measuring are eigenstates, so there is no collapse. So you understand that if you measure, if you have a qubit which is in the spin up state, fine? I measure the uh, poly Z on that qubit. What will be the state of that qubit after measurement? It's a plus minus. No. If it's in the zero state, up state, right? That is already an eigenstate of the Z operator. No? It's an eigenstate of Z with eigenvalue plus one. So there is no reason for it to collapse into anything else. Na? 
there are two eigen states of z 0 and 1 so if i start with 0 i'll stay in 0 na make sense or not think of it like this that you have a block sphere right you think of this block sphere picture your 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 state is a dot on this block sphere right and there are two eigen states of and you are talking about measuring 0 and 1 now i know many of you get this but i'm just emphasizing this uh, and so your your state psi let's say your dot is closer to the north pole than it is to the south pole right now when you make a measurement of z is your state going to be more likely to collapse into the north pole which is zero or the south pole which is one north pole and if your state so as you go closer and closer to the north pole the probability of collapse will become equal to one you can think of it that way if you want when you are talking about plus and minus states plus and minus are eigen states of which operator yes. x plus and minus are eigen states of x and i i y okay so if you are measuring if you are measuring the x or the i y state or i y operator <coughs> and your big initial state is 0 or 1 then it will collapse into which state if you if your if your state is initially to begin with 0 or 1 and you measure the x operator what will be the outcomes what are the eigen states of the x operator plus and minus so what will be the outcomes either the plus state or the minus state na? and with probability half each okay i if you don't understand this uh, zoom people and people here please just think about this this is a seemingly very minor point but it lies at the at the found at the base of everything that is going on the fact that you can perform a measurement of these operators without destroying the state because if you cannot do that then nothing that you want to do as far as correcting your errors without changing the state without destroying the quantum correlations is possible Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So the, like, this is fine, but like, are we able to like, uh, uh, like measure that whether a system is in plus or minus? If we are doing x or mm -hmm. one or minus one state, mm -hmm. we able to measure that without having that state. No, no. So that depends on what your state is. This is the whole point, na? That see in in this setup, all our states. our superposition of 0 and 1 so if i measure any of the z operators right i'm always in some eigen state of those operators huh? so my state will not collapse so it won't collapse right so, like, are we able to make out that this is a plus state or the issue is if it is in one state we're going to say that there are no The bits are the same. But the thing is, the, so so the thing is, so here's the thing, na. That okay. So let me let me uh, show you again. If you take z one and z two, and you act on alpha zero 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 plus beta one one one, what is the what is the result? It's equal to alpha zero zero zero. Plus beta one one one, right? Is the state changed? It didn't change, but do we know that it changed? Like if we know that the state didn't change, then we can say the bits are the same. But we do not know that, right? Because we no, no, but 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 as far as the mathematical theory is concerned, 
these two operators will not cause the state to change na practically no no so practically there might be some some errors in the measurement in the in the way you implement this measure which might constitute a a separate source of errors right so there might be an error in the syndrome measurement itself but assuming that the syndrome measurement can be performed without making an error right now your question actually has a very nice answer i just didn't go into it because it requires a little bit of math which is it involves something called the notion of a fidelity and mixed states right so exactly what you are asking is that uh how can you tell whether there is an error which is big or which is small okay why because these quantum states live in this continuous space right so let's say that you have a bit flip error which is generated by which which uh, poly aditya bit flip is caused by which uh, poly x excellent now if i start with the with the state plus and i act on it with x what happens to that state but is the qubit flipped the qubit is flipped na no? 0 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 0 but nothing happens to that state on the other hand if i start with the zero state and i and there is a single qubit error generated by x what happens it goes to 1 if i if if the error no no x acting on zero will give me 1 na so my point is that how do i quantify so in one case in both cases an error is taking place which is a bit flip is happening i know that for sure right but in one case the bit flip leaves the state invariant in the second case the state becomes orthogonal to itself right so in the first case i should not worry about that error no i don't care because i only care about those errors which cause my state to change into something that is orthogonal to itself so this question is answered this is answered by the notion of fidelity right fidelity is the term that one uses to describe uh the quality of sound right normally or a signal fidelity how true is it to the original so uh so for this fidelity is basically the overlap of two states okay so if you take two states psi and phi and you overlap you take the inner product if those two states are the same you get one otherwise you get zero right so the fidelity is essentially given by by this quantity so now what one does is the following you write down an operator which looks like this i am assuming that all of you can see what i am writing okay what is this operator doing our state phi or state psi is the state of interest okay this is the one that we we care about the number p is what number p is the probability what is it the probability of of bit flip right what does the first term tell you the first term tells you that no bit flip is happening if there is no bit flip then the first term tells you that your state doesn't change what about the second term the second term tells you that there is a bit flip that is expressed by the presence of the x operator but note the way in which 
this projector is constructed. We take our state psi and we flip the bit so we get x psi. This is the state with the flip bit, right? So if you want the projector for the state psi, you get you take bra psi, so you take ket psi and then adjoint ket psi. If you want to construct the projector for the flipped state, what do you get? Take you take the adjoint of the x psi, so you will get what? You will get x uh, ket psi adjoint psi and then again adjoint x. What is adjoint x? X x only. No? So this row that you have here, right? This row is what we refer to as a channel. Okay, it represents, uh, so something is happening, you are sending your state through a, through from point A to point B, right? And presumably it comes out on the other end, something happens to it, right? Either there is a bit flip or there's no bit flip. If there is a bit flip, that is represented by the, by the second term, otherwise it's represented by the first term. And so this row is an operator, right? And it's called a, I mean, that's how you represent channels in quantum information. Okay. Now, how do I define the fidelity? Okay. So the fidelity is written, defined as follows. And technically what rho is, rho is what is called a mixed state. And this is the Greek letter rho, by the way, not p. Okay. So the fidelity is defined as, as this expression. So the fidelity is a, a function of two things, two inputs. It takes in a pure state psi and it takes in a, a mixed state rho. Okay. And that's what this row is. This is a mixed state. Okay. And don't worry about what mixed states are for the time being. Now we can do this calculation by putting the expression for, for row uh, in our inner product, right? So we get psi and then we put one minus P right, plus x p times x psi psi x. Uh, right, okay, so this is our fidelity. Now what will happen, the first, the first term will just give us one minus p, right? And the second term will give us the following expectation value of P times the expectation value of X acting on Psi whole square. Okay. You get Psi X expectation value Psi and then Psi X expect expectation value of, so you get that twice. So that's why I'm writing that as whole square. And there's a magnitude because there is an adjoint in there. Okay. Now, both of these terms are positive definite. So this fidelity is always greater than or equal to zero. Right? And uh, the second term so the second term is also non-negative. When is the second term zero? When psi is equal to either zero or one, the second term goes to zero, right? Right, so now the second term is positive definite. So that means the minimum value it can have is zero, right? So the minimum value of the fidelity is what? It's a root of one minus P. Right? This is the minimum value of the fidelity in this particular case. Now, let's go back to that, uh, that three qubit uh, 
encoding alpha 000 beta 111 where we did this probability analysis right and what did our uh, what did our probability what was the probability of having a bit flip on either one or less of the qubits it was i'll write down the expression it was 1 minus p cube plus 3p 1 minus p square right we derived this in the last lecture i believe right so we can write this in terms of rho okay we can translate this into an expression for rho and then we can calculate the minimum fidelity the minimum fidelity turns out to be 1 minus 3p square plus 2p cube i'll leave it as an exercise for you for now and then in the next class we'll work it out if which is tomorrow if you don't see how to get this and this fidelity uh this is the minimum value okay and remember that only when p is less than or equal to half does the three qubit encoding have any advantage right and um so so the this this fidelity should be more than zero right and the fidelity will be more than zero if p is less than half right so this tells you the same thing that when p is less than half your fidelity is greater than zero now to i don't i'm not sure whether or not it answers yeah. <laughs> or whether i have led you down a path that is long enough you don't remember where you started from yeah.